Okay, we should be online. Sorry, there was a little delay. Um, <laughs> I went a little bit into panic mode because OBS played a trick on me and it just didn't um, share my screen, which is pretty nice lately that, you know, you, you don't want to see me all the time, just big here waffling. You even would like to see the screen and what I'm doing on screen and it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It looks like we are online. And today we will play with um, Mosaic Neon, which is just uh, the latest installment from Heaviosity in the Mosaic series. And um, yeah, even this one played a little joke on me because it didn't uh, <laughs> start. By the way, I hope you can hear me. I hope you can even hear the audio then. The last stream, someone after the stream then complained that the levels have been completely off. I mean, I have to rely on what I see in OBS. So you just tell me if you can hear me well, if you can hear the music well, if the music is maybe too loud or maybe too soft and these things. Yeah, the tablet even is running, even this one, it's a Windows thing and it needed to do its update and yeah. Um, the Mosaic series from Heaviosity, by now I do have the Mosaic Pads and the Mosaic Neon is what they call a project that they are passionate about. It's a library that they are passionate about. And what's so cool, I mean, you know by now, I think I'm, I'm a big Heaviosity fanboy, if you will. I use their library on a daily basis. And even recently I showed how soft they even can go because many people, when they think about Heaviosity, they think about, you know, Damage 2 and Symphonic Destruction and Forzo and, and these heavy things, but they really know their thing. And with the rhythmic textures and the intimate textures, they even have string textures that can go really soft, that can go really human, if you would like. And, and I mean, let me know in the comments if you would like me. Even if today Neon is on the program, you would like to hear something from the intimate textures or the rhythmic textures. Just let me know, you know, it's just loading up another library and playing with it. But today what I wanted to show really is the Mosaic Neon. This one is um, based on the vintage synth and there are many patches and, and, and many presets that really reminded me of, of the computer games that I played when I was a little kid. And I suggest we just go a little bit through. Obviously, whilst I was preparing this, I already came up with some ideas. So I suggest I first play those ideas and then I will go a little bit through the various presets. And I will show you why, in my opinion, even as a working composer, it's so important maybe to stick with, it depends on how many you can handle in your head, um, developers, because once you know their user interface and you know how to use it, then switching from one library to the next doesn't make you lose time just by, oh, how, how did I do the gate sequence and how did it work with the modulation and if I wanted to pitch shift or if I wanted to, you know, whatsoever. It's just like click in, click in, click in. And another thing that's really important to me is the user interface itself, you know, if it's inspiring, is it something that right on I can understand or if I really need to go various times through a user manual to understand what exactly those knobs that all look the same um, mean. And um, another thing that maybe some of you don't realize that in those libraries, yes, you get always lots and lots of presets, 150, 200 presets, but obviously it doesn't stop there because most of those presets, they have a three channel system. This means there are three sound sources combined to that one preset and every sound source can completely be modulated and controlled on its own for the tuning, for the panning. In this case, even for, I will switch on now here the, the screen so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, in this case, you see even the layout on the keyboard that's so hands-on, that's so um, useful, you're just like, okay, this one, I would have it only in the lower register, or only in the higher register. You can do this. You can, for every single challenge channel, choose the velocity layers. You can choose the pitch bend range. You can invert this. Even this is pretty cool. So 
maybe you know you go up with a pitch wheel and then two of those channels they go up whilst one is inverted and goes down that's pretty cool too and there's an arpeggiator there are the master effects obviously there is the punish button and there is the macro sequencer and this is pretty cool because you do have the envelope the eq the filter the drive the gate and the space all in that macro sequencer and you can control it or with your mod wheel changing things or you can switch on that macro sequencer and then the whole thing gets automated which is pretty neat so let's play through some of the presets um, with something that i already came up with before i started the stream and then we will go a little bit through the arps the pads the playable and the rhythmic stuff within mosaic neon and i even prepared obviously to have something underneath the damage drum kit the foundations synth bass the foundations piano might come handy and the play it forward series where you do have loops and stuff like this and as the foundation series even this play it forward every year Aviosity comes out with the play it forward library that is for free but the only thing that they ask you is to donate for a good cause so every year they choose a foundation or whatever that you can donate to and then you get this library for free and then even the damage to production loops even those have been for free ones even there are pretty pretty cool and pretty pretty, pretty useful i mean this was 2020 so um there is no access to them anymore but i'm lucky i have them and i will show them to you and i just encourage you keep your eyes open when the next free libraries from heaviosity will come out because even their free libraries are not um as limited as many free libraries from other developers they have really lots to offer you can see here you know the volume the penguin the punch knob and the space knob and the known good quality of the sound i will put on my headphones so even me i can hear what i'm doing i mean i don't know what i'm doing but at least i would like to hear it Yeah, as I said, they have been for free and every year there is something for free. Let's just hit play and whilst this starts, I will have something from the mode Mac because today is know your tools, know your libraries because I really would like to talk a little bit about that Mosaic engine, which is similar to other Heaviosity engines. So, you know, once you understand the system, how it works, it doesn't matter then if it's Symphonic Destruction or if it's Ventor or if it... You know it's pretty the same and it's even of course grow your tools grow your libraries this library unfortunately is no longer on enterprise but if you compare the content and the playability and all that stuff that you get with this library with other libraries that are on the market i think the price is anyhow fair otherwise just wait for your next sale if you are thinking about getting mosaic neon or even mosaic pads I might talk a little bit even about mosaic pads today because as you can see they do have the precise same interface just different colors so once you know how to use one you know how to use the other and mosaic pads is by far by far my favorite library if it comes to pads for one simple reason there is one simple reason you have for every sound three different sound sources that you can modulate to your likings so those pads get never ever boring and as i said before you lay them out on the keyboard as you like and that pitch band thing that is so useful to me so let's listen i will have um something from the mood mark meanwhile you already get the vibe this is pretty 80s 90s analog synth <laughs> it's fun it's fun i can promise you it's fun 
and as you can see it's one preset at a time. Jean-Michel Jarre. Jean-Michel Jarre. I hope some of you know him. There you can see the engine work in the macro sequencer in this case. So I think you get the vibe from that library. This is pretty much 80s and 90s synth, vintage synth stuff, but in a modern engine, in a modern interface, so you can really do with those sounds what you want. So in this one here, I do have from the arpeggiated ones, you know, you do have here the snapshots, there are the arpeggiated ones, all those in straights and in triplets. There are the pads, there is the playable stuff and there is the rhythmic stuff. And in this case, from the arpeggiated stuff, it was the Elized Alien Bell Jam. This is what's happening. And pretty sure it has to do with the gate. So you do have, just to explain you quickly the interface, you do have the mixer page. This is the easiest one. You do have the three channels, one, two, three. You do have their volume, their panning and their tune. And you can tell wherever there are two of those arrows, you can then link them to the macro se sequences. So I can switch off all three channels. Obviously you won't hear anything. Then I switch on only the first channel, for example, the crunch mallet. This is what the crunch mallet is doing. Then you do have the controls where you see channel one, channel two, channel three, what they do here, the rate, the smoothness and that stuff. You have the options where you have channel one, channel two, channel three. I switch on channel two. And you see there's the line for channel two and then you can say this one you only want it on the upper range for example even here the keyboard colors then are changing so but down there this one doesn't play the sound from channel two if you don't give it the whole range and then channel three is the same thing if you switch it on there's the range you do have the arpeggiator for the three channels. It's not that they always work together. No, you can have an arpeggiator on the first channel, but channel two and channel three, like in this case, channel three don't have anything. And even there you can tell if the arpeggiator works like a normal arpeggiator. If you play out a chord and then you say the arpeggiator type up or down or up and down and repeat and that stuff, or as a chord, or if you have it random, you can anyhow here switch on chords. So for example, the first six steps, are a chord and then it starts to modulate. This is what I'm telling about. If a library offers you all those possibilities, then it's sonic heaven. And then it gives you as a composer the possibility to really bring to your ears what you have in your mind and what the next step of your uncharted journey is as you compose, as you write music, as you set the next note as the next step. Then there is the macro sequencer, as I said before. Um, this one here, you can switch it on. You see it's moving now. Or you switch it off and then the whole thing is simply controlled by the mod wheel, which in my case, the mod wheel is my beloved Nano Control 2. And the last one is the master effects where you can choose if it's mono or if it's poly, the delay, obviously, the master EQ and the reverb and the punish knob. And if we are on the macro sequencer, you see you can in this macro sequencer modulate the envelope, the EQ, the filter, the drive, the gate and the space. And even here, obviously, if you click, for example, on the gate, then you see what the gate is doing. This is here in the control page where we have been before. There you control those six values, the envelope, the EQ, the filter, the drive, the gate, and the space and this is the gate sequencer and this is why it's doing its thing. 
I will work on one channel for now. Just you know, this is just as you as you would like to a tutorial, a lesson in how does that mosaic engine work and how much does it offer to you. You, you see it here. If I switch that off. Then uh, this is what the gate is doing on channel one. You hear there's the sound and then it gets off. And this bop 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 comes here from the arpeggiator. Arpeggiator switched off on channel one. And then it's just a browse. This sound is called a crunch mullet. On channel one, we have the one crunch mullet. This is the basic sound of it. And then if I switch on here, the arpeggiator, then the arpeggiator is doing its thing. And then obviously here, there is still the gate. If I switch off the gate, then this arpeggiator is going on the whole time. If I switch on the gate where I do have here the performance, the steps and the shape, you see it's going down and here you, you set the rate. Now it's eighth notes, see it's way slower or sixteenth notes. The amount, how much should this gate sequencer act on your sound? You now it's not that strong anymore. I switch it on completely, boop, 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 and it cuts off the sound. The same goes for the smoothness. How smooth should this thing act? And this is one channel. You have three channels available. I switch on the others again. I think you get the idea. It's pretty cool what you can do here. I think you really, really get the idea. And the sounds, it's easy. You, oh, you go on the mixer page, you click here, and then you can browse through the various categories for each sound. Even here, if we switch on one, two, three. Uh, it's fun. It's fun, really. It's fun. Play with this and learn how it works. Yeah. All those differences. And, and now, for example, just to show you on channel one, even here, the control page, you click here, you can go through the sounds. If you don't like that mallet sound, go for Digitron. And here's the preview. This means whenever you click on it, you right away get then a preview. Computed key 78, Circus Digitron, Breathing Pluck. And obviously as it's an arpeggiator as we had before, where I don't switch down the chords, if I play a chord, I do not get the chord, I just get the notes played by the arpeggiator, except if I hear switch on for the first six or eight or whatever so um, steps. The chords that I really have the possibility to play a chord in here. I hope this could show you a little bit how the various pages and options in this thing work. If not, if you're watching this stream, you have the possibility, that's a cool thing, you know, just write a question in the comment. I can see it here and then maybe answer. Let's go to the next preset. Even this one was an arpeggiated one. The circadian pulses. For example, on this one, if you say, there's something too soft in it, 
Up there, let's check this. What is it? It's the first one. It's the first sound, the one on channel one. This one, in this case, is called from the pads, the additive rust. Yeah. Brain dysfunction. Yeah, and that's it, as easy as that. And the soft pad isn't there anymore. And for example, let me show you this on the pitch bend. As I said before, I have the pitch bend set down to an octave up to two semitones. And it works on all of them. If I here set this one to minus two, means if the pitch wheel goes up, this sound will pitch down and it sounds like this. You hear how they diverse? That, that's pretty cool. I mean, um, some of you might know, I just finished the, my score for this short horror movie, Sympathia. And there I used with stuff like this because it really gives such an unstable vibe if the sound pitches. But in different directions. Play with those things. Really, really, really play with those things. Then the next sound that I had here, yeah, I went through the arpeggiated stuff a lot. The doomsday clock. precisely is happening here you see there is the arpeggiator doing its thing and this is what the what the gate sequencer on channel 2 is doing you see it's ramping up the sound 32 steps and then it's cutting down whilst the other two continue to pulse. <laughs> yeah, what can I say? I really hope I can show you with these streams so we do have a little bit of time how much you can do with those libraries if you know how to use them because there is really lots of stuff that you can change if you're not happy with the over 150 presets that are anyhow or in this case snapshots that are anyhow delivered by the guys over at Hemiosity. Dual bits triplets next preset only one preset this is this is what i like so much that's only one preset i mean how many tracks do you have in whatever program you work with cubase or logic or studio one or whatsoever that's only one and even in this one let's analyze a little bit what's going on you have the three channels you do have on channel one something sounding like this you have on channel two something like this <laughs> a chip tune in this case and on channel 3 you do have the behind glass those are the three sources of that sound because even i learned a lot about sound design and about creating my own sounds if needed um, by analyzing what did they do what precisely is going on there why does it sound the way it does then there's the arpeggiator for the three channels we can switch them off 
and it's doing just this. We switch it on on channel 1. Let's play a little with this. Just to see you now what's happening. Okay, what's happening in channel two? In channel two, this is happening. <laughs> That's so cool. And what's happening in channel three? In channel three, this is happening. Nothing within the arpeggiator, so it has to do with the gate. Because there goes the amount, up and down, you see? That's the macro sequencer here going up and down. Here, there is the macro sequencer, which goes on a rate of one fourth in 16 steps. If we set this to 16, It's losing all its magic because there isn't the time anymore to modulate the sound. Let's set it maybe to eighth notes. Yeah, then it's working, but as they made it in one fourth, then there's enough time to have it work in that way. And you can switch on everything again. this because the arpeggiators are switched off in channel 2 and then channel 1 we switch them on yeah that's this track the next track still arpeggiated one the game man Even this one pretty interesting. And I'm pretty sure this whenever you press a key exactly is there. How could I tell so fast? Because here I don't see anything happening. This one is a digital feedback from the digital noises and it's only from there on. It's not on the lower keys as we had before. You can set those sounds on the keyboard wherever you would like to have them. Them arpeggiated one that's an interesting one that's an interesting one in the lower range on channel one you have this and I'm pretty sure you see it's not at all modulated so you can simply play a bass and the upper range with and it's fun those sounds are fun and those sounds even remind me a lot when I started out I was 15 or 16 I think with my Korg DS8 and then there was this Yamaha drum computer even and then I had a Yamaha TG100 sound module and stuff like this and the sounds have been pretty much like this the only difference is they have been eight voice polyphonic uh, I couldn't do more than eight tracks simultaneously today yeah um, only the computer gives you any limits Mm. Mosaic Neon, a pad called Big Love. Exactly, and on this one I played before. On this one I played before. So here is the mod wheel. You see, here is the mod wheel going up and on. What does the mod wheel do in this case? The mod wheel works on the gate. What does the gate do? If you look at the gate, it's modulated like this but if I bring it down 
Then it's just a pet. But when I bring it up... So... As I always say, know your tools, know your libraries. If you... I, I, I'm, you know, I only have two hands, I will try. That's not only a, a, a normal pad that is there and, and you can't do anything. You know, you can even a pad, which by itself just isn't too ugly. And I'm only working on the gate. Let's switch on maybe even the drive. Let's go to the drive page, the saturation and the distortion on all three channels. It's really exaggerate here. I would like to invert this, so I click here and then it goes the complete opposite direction. Because then you see, when it's wobbling, it's soft and it gets distorted when it's standing still. Filter. And I'm still moving the macro sequencer by myself. Obviously, you can automate this. The rate, the steps, the type, the shape, the smoothness, and the amount. You see, and then it's doing its thing automatically. <clears throat> How can't you be in love with a library like this, which gives you all those sonic possibilities? And yeah. There are even lots and lots and lots, I mean, really lots of sources to choose from. Um... In my opinion, I mean, you might have another opinion. If you have your preferred vintage things, let me know in the chat if you're in the chat. If not, let me know in the comments. If you have your preferred pads, let me know in the comments. I'm curious. Let's discuss this. Okay, rhythmic stuff, blossoms, triplets.
this is one preset. This is one preset, okay? I don't even have a bass underneath or drums underneath. And this is precisely what I think I will do now. What we can do, what we can do, we can maybe mute those. So I can start from the beginning. Okay, give it a little time to one, two, three, four. Maybe the 120 was a little too fast for this. Let's set this to 110. I'm curious. Bass underneath. The bass is from the Foundation series, the free series from Heavy RCT. Alarming sweeps. What else do we have in here? Ding, 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 ding. Fabian, hi, nice to see you. I'm going to the vintage things, and I'm pretty sure you love those sounds. Bin immer ganz sicher, dass das auch genau dein Ding ist. Let's try this one. Okay, so it's getting interesting, but they are fighting a little bit for the frequencies. Let me check this quickly. Maybe this one is going too low. Yes, so we will work on this as we had it before. We will work on this. I do have here my three channels. Just let me quickly check how these channels... What is in there? This one is fine. This one is fine. So it's only on channel three. So uh, on channel one, sorry, on channel one, there's the slow note. So I will go to the options and I will just bring this one up. That it doesn't play the low note. I just excluded that low note here on the interface by switching the keyboard range. And now it, they shouldn't have problems with the frequencies anymore. Let's... Yeah, you see the low end now is pretty much cleaner. Kids in the sun is always a good thing. And then here in the damage drum kit, um, let's maybe just look for... This one is way better for what we have here. And then maybe at the end. We ended, we ended just with this, this high note here. Okay, let's do this quickly. It works. So now I, I, I did something with it. Okay, now I did something with it. Now I used even 
the drums and the bass. But if I exclude them and we have only the Mosaic Neon playing, I mean, now the bass register is missing as I excluded it, but it's already pretty complete by itself. So yeah, if, if you are into those 80s and 90s synth sounds, then I'm pretty sure Mosaic Neon can't leave you untouched. That's that's nearly impossible. And now we leave those muted so we can remain at the beginning. And then I have here just prepared ah, the Mosaic Pads. Just to show you Mosaic Pads, it, 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 it's another library from um, the Mosaic series. In this case, it's Pads. And even here you do get the tonal ones, which are divided in gritty and mellow, and the atonal ones and the chordal ones and that stuff. And I have here just one prepared, which is called the Creeping Doubts. I will just noodle a little bit with this one preset. This is precisely what I said at the beginning. We are now in another library from the Mosaic series, but you do have the exact same interface. You do have your three channels where you can choose the sound from. You do have the control for those three channels. You do have the options where you would like to have them on the keyboard and the velocity and the pitch bend range. You do have the arpeggiator. You do have the macro sequencer. And you do have the master effects. It's the exact same thing. And then you can work quick, switching from one library to the other once you understood how this interface works. This is this is why I really like those libraries so much. And and you can a lot of this you can translate even into Symphonic Destruction, for example, or into Vento, or even the Novo engine and, and this stuff. The Gravity Engine is a different beast. Because I have here, you see the scoring guitars and, and, and the vocalists, they are in the gravity engine. That's a little bit different, but uh, at least the mosaic engine is pretty close to the, 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 the bigger libraries, even in an Ascent, yeah, Ascent. Um, I'm overusing it. I'm really overusing Ascent. I'm having it in nearly every track that I write at the moment, because it really can do from a normal piano to the most cinematic, moving distorted whatsoever things and even those pads or oh, even those pads you do have the arpeggiator and you see it's switched on only on channel two if you switch it on even then on channel three maybe and you go to the macro sequencer through the gate even here the gate is only on channel one even on channel two even on channel three different rates just as we had it before now it's modulated by the macro sequencer which is switched on and here you see you know how the wheel should go it's in the fourth rate in 45 steps you switch it off and then it just goes by the mod wheel you do it yourself Le learn learn to, to really use those libraries. But today I wanted to stay a little bit in Mosaic Neon. So what we can do now, um, maybe just go through some of them. Maybe just go through some of them. I think the arpeggiated ones we already had. Triple tingles. That's only the bass. And, and as I said, I'm so curious. The arpeggiator is switched off on the bass. The gate is switched off on the bass. Let's see what's happening in the upper register. And if 
even here. Yeah, you switch those off and the magic is gone. And the magic is gone. If this is switched off, then the result is only this. The macro sequencer is still doing its thing, so you, you hear the filter and the EQ is still working. So I switch even this one off. Yeah, the mosaic libraries, the sound of them is really something magical, Fabian. I can't agree more. And, and you see, l l listen to this. Because the macro sequencer now is switched off, the gate is switched off, and the arpeggiator is switched off. I switch them back on, and then this is happening out of the same sounds. It, 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 it's maybe a steep learning curve at the beginning to get into those because they offer a lot, but they offer it even in an interface that is quite comprehensive, that is really comprehensive. They even worked a lot on this. There are not only round knobs all over the place and, and you really don't get it. No, they have it on various pages and they have it at least to me. I mean, that's me, please. That's me. Someone might tell me that's just confusional. I never will understand how it works. That's fine. I mean, I really, okay, I have lots of those libraries. I work, I work with them. I worked with them. I, I studied them. And now for me, this is as comprehensive as it can get. But that's me. That's me. So please don't take this for, um, then, um, uh, the pads, the pads, um, big love. We had a burning revelations, another pad from mosaic neon. <laughs> What's this? Yeah, and, and, and we have to be, we have to be fair. We have to be fair. Look, the macro sequencer. I switched this one off. I only switched the macro sequencer off. of the galaxy with the switch of a button exactly <laughs> the macro sequence just switched off how much does it do i'm in a very lucky position i know that i'm in a very lucky position because i really have more libraries that i might ever be able to use but if you have all those libraries then you have even the chance to compare them and you see wow the sound of this one is wonderful but if I would like to bring this sound to that, then I would need external effects. And yes, there's a possibility even with the onboard um, plugins from Logic. Absolutely. But here you have it within the library, just within the library with a click of one button. <laughs> This is what the macro sequencer is doing. As I said, I switched this one off. The arpeggiator is switched off. But there's still a lot of stuff going on. Exactly, here. Because on the three channels, there is the gate sweeper just switched on. You see how much stuff there is? I switch even this one off. And then you have the pure sounds. Even here, you're curious what's going on. Switch off those. Daisy, hey, nice to see you. Welcome back. Welcome back. That's good to have you back. So, um, channel one. The computed muted. This is just the sound of channel one. Then channel two. There is the brass. Hydraulio. Yeah, <laughs> this is how brass sounded once in our synthesizers. And on channel three, there's the dark fire. These are the three channels, then they are combined. And even that's pretty cool because on every channel, you know, you do have the volume of this channel and you do have the panning of the channel. So you see, you really say where you would like to have them. And obviously even this is part of the magic work with panning use the stereo field place the sounds all over the place 
So these three sounds. Then, yeah, here we switch on the arpeggiator of those. And at the gate sequencer, the rate. Here is the rate on 64th. Wow. 1 4th 16th. This is why this one makes this. Let's just bring this one to 16th, for example. <laughs> not sure which one I like most. No, not sure. 32s. This one. Yeah, this one. Oh, I'm Pierre Fabian. And then, and then, we switch on the arpeggiator. And we switch on the macro sequencer. And you can see how the sound is shaped. Oh, what can I say? I, I'm really in love with them. I, I really. You can spend so much time really only going through those controls and learn what precisely is happening there and why does it do its Thing and why does it start to wobble and why does it um I'm, i i love to work with, with low pass and high pass filters even because they give you the possibility to have this wow effect you know of, of a mouth going going up and 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 closing again there will be a video soon i have already lots of videos on youtube that i never ever published um where i scored a you a youtube trailer within five minutes with one preset one preset from symphonic destruction working mainly then with the low pass filter on it on the pads the church of particles i love playing in d There isn't much happening, there isn't much happening, why? By now even you know. <laughs> uh, heavenly transforms, and then we go to Ice Age. Yeah, I'm, I'm that child, I'm falling for the names, really. Oh man, something came to my mind, something came to my mind. Uh, I love this sound. Sorry, let me try something slowly. 90.
moly. Um, excuse my playing mistakes. Um, but uh, wow. Just a second, eh? just a second. Yeah, I think this one suits it. Don't worry, I won't play it over the whole length. The problem is when I do my streams, I need to have the second monitor switched off so I'm way slower than I am normally when I'm when I'm working but um, yeah be patient with me be patient with me I'm I'm already really really happy that I can share my screen now with you during my streams I couldn't do this last year and then it's a big advantage now that you even see what I'm doing Control the world with these sounds. Yeah, <laughs> we could. But what I had in mind, really, when I heard that pad, what came to my mind, as it sounds so organic, I would love to combine it with woodwinds. Don't know why. Um, so, um, designer ensembles. Let's go for the Wento Essentials, not even for the full version. Through the Fog. Ambient ones. Yeah, maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. Let's see a little bit rhythmic. No. Exactly. Something organic like this. Just give me, give me, give me, give me. Let's take this one. I think they sound good together. They do. <laughs> they do. They do. You see, this this pad really inspired me as it sounded as analog as it is. It really had a natural vibe to it, which inspired me to, to hear hey, woodwinds. I, I don't know why. Um, I would like to keep this for the future as I really like that we have been in the pads, the Ice Age, the Mirage Jittered, Oceans of Emotion. Curious? Yes, I am. Okay, let's take this track, let it play with this pet.
this high note, I don't like it, but I, I like it. And you see, ah, <laughs> even even this pad is absolutely wonderful. Okay, I don't have the delete key, so boop, you make it like this, gone, bye bye. I'll leave it there. Then another pad, and then underwater flight, and then we go to something again, pretty gritty and aggressive. On the underwater flight, a pad. That's really a pad. Nice. Gate. The gate is a little bit too much for me, so the amount. I will dial down a little bit the amount. Ah, it's automated there. So then, yeah, the smoothness. We will smoothen it a little bit out. This stuff I really could play for a long, long, long time. Um, then there's the playable. The playable one, if I remember well. is pretty plucky. So most of those sounds, you know, they are yeah, playable bells from above. <laughs> I need this library. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry. I, I don't want you to... even respond so good to velocity really really playable Um, I think there must be a reason why I am that much of a heavy Ossity fanboy. There wasn't one library yet where there have been bugs, you know, really bugs that can be very annoying. I can name lots of other libraries where there have been bugs, but I won't. There wasn't one and there wasn't one which was inspiring it its very own way. If it was the big and the heavy in symphonic destruction, if it was the sound design all around a piano like in Ascent, the Uncharted 88, maybe the most inspiring percussive library that I ever had under my fingers and so on and so forth. And I can't stress this one out, out enough, the intimate textures and the rhythmic textures. If you are into string writing, if you really would like soft and lush strings. So bells for dreaming. Imagine what to expect.
<laughs> yeah, okay, this stream might last until midnight. Chunk man. <laughs> Clock chimes. The Compu Piano 1980. Fabian, this one is for us. Old timers. Dark folded keys. Something like this. Maybe you need to work a little bit on the sound on this one. December cold. Fabian, I, I don't know you personally, but I can tell you I am an old timer. So, um, you know, having kids, I think we both are. But old timers are a good thing, okay? They are worthy. They are really worthy. <laughs> Ethan's keys. Dusty Gloom keys. Let's go a little bit for the names. Echo Chimer 80 pieces. Gametronics, Future Hop, Fun Key Leads, fi The Final Boss. This sounds like computer game stuff. Do you remember? It's C64. Or the Amiga 500? Computer games had this sound. <laughs> now I play with the PlayStation and I really can't understand how and why and when. The biggest thing we did was in, in the university where I was teaching, we had something like eight computers in, in a network where we played Unreal, but it, it have been pixels still and, and now the graphics are so but this is this is how it sounded and we play this is cool the final boss thank you heavy city thank you gametronics <laughs> Can you say fucking shit? I hope so. You, you can. Whether it's haunted horns. Yippie Schweinebacke. Fabian. Yippie Schweinebacke. Da werden jetzt viele Schwierigkeiten damit haben. Das war so aus der Zeit auch. Haunting FM Piano. Yeah, this is very haunting. Then another playable mirror image, optical rust, piano, emulating. C64, genau, der 64er, genau, das war genau die Zeit. I don't 
know if you on YouTube can hear it the way I can hear it under my phones. Big, 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 big stuff. Optical Rust, plugged FM keys. Then let's go for one last one, the Shining wave keys on 6-bit. Prepare for takeoff. Sorry, prepare for takeoff is even the one that caught my attention. Do we have any upper range? Ah. That's an interesting one. That's a very... A very interesting one. Which one is this? Channel 2, Channel 3. What do we have on Channel 2? The granular flutter and on Channel 3 the impulse buttons. Sorry, I would like to hear them on their own. Give me a second. This one is here, okay. No, it's it's on channel one actually, and you won't believe how this one is called. This one is from the Chip Tunes, and it's called Game Boy's Revenge. <laughs> Game Boy's Revenge. Mario Boy. <laughs> yeah, if, even if I will close this um, live stream pretty soon, I will remain a little bit pretty sure in... Uh, Neon. I didn't have much time recently to play with the new libraries. Um, yeah, I finished this short movie, as I said. I'm working on two musical projects. One since uh, Thursday, which is old, but now it's actual. Now it's new. Now I need to finish something, and it's it's quite huge. It's more than 60 tracks and stuff. Now I'm in the rhythmic stuff. This one is called Blossoms and I already love it. Yeah, Daisy, there was a polka stuff in it. Oompa, oompa. <laughs> come on, guys. Come on, guys. Cat looking for a friend. Luis from Heaviosity has a very, very cool video on the channel of Heaviosity where he wrote the demo track uh, and he had this cat looking for a friend. There's again a lot of stuff going on, but we had this before. I won't go again through everything that's going on in the macro sequencer in the arpeggiator and obviously for sure yeah you see on the gates page that's exactly you know here it's ramping up this one then cuts down and then this one chimes in uh. you can learn a lot simply by looking what precisely they did when they presented and when they programmed their presets thank you this encouraged me to get my dancing shoes on do so and come back making cool videos um if you haven't seen daisy duke's youtube channel there are pretty cool even inspiring even funny um videos so yeah check out her channel Nice. 
circular stories. Connections. There are many, many, many Q starters. It's an ugly word, but there are many Q starters in this library. Take this one. That's a freaking cool one. This one I would like to keep in the template because I might make even a video out of this then if I find the time, if I find the time. This one we had. Dawnings. Rhythmic. Then, we can crescendos. That's a neat one. Digital droppers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Disturbances. Dream waves. Lots of stuff. Dungeon and daggers. Yeah, yeah, I know it's an ugly word and, and we are all creatives and we are all composers and we do not need cue starters and I'm happy. I'm happy to find presets like this. You do have a scene and you do have a scene scored. Holy moly. Yeah, this one will remain in this uh, project. Wow. <laughs> this is when I say, if I find a library that really strikes me, then I'm willing to spend 90 minutes playing with it and showcasing it. There is no chance to do this in a video. And unfortunately, normally I do not have the time to really, really play with those things. So I'm the first one saying, thanks for the live streams. At least I have to take those 90 minutes. 
to go through something like this and then you find those presets and then you get those ideas and then you oh yeah phil phil even phil has a very very cool channel he's making good good music and he's not having enough subscribers for the quality work that he does so even instrumental music media check out his channel really worth it um i enjoy his music a lot and i take even inspirations from there but shh, don't tell anybody else it's home secrets we, we don't tell them um dungeon and daggers forest creators come on come on come on come on Now I need three hands. Uh, sorry, do, do I need say more or is, is it enough? Is it enough to listen to this? I think it's enough. I, I could even completely switch off the microphone and just have you listened to those sounds? They really are self-explaining how much stuff there is going on. Next snapshot. Gating synthetic clouds. Wow, wow, I did too much. Yeah, you can, you can easily underscore a scene, especially if it's um, dialogue or if it's... Um, yeah, what, uh, we had a funny discussion about it uh, recently. If it's uh, one of those, uh, I don't get the, the word at the moment, the documentaries, you know, about nature or penguins or stuff like this. There is always someone waffling. You can't do uh, a huge score. You can't go with a pretty nice melody line. You would distract from the pictures and you would distract from the dialogue. And every director will tell you this. I learned a lot, a lot with the last three short movies that I scored over the last six months working with movie directors that really most of the time tell you do less and even a pretty nice lesson that I learned from a very good director was like um and, and there will be a video pretty I, I can't talk about the movie because now it's going through the festivals but I will just talk about the music without the pictures and without the dialogue but there was a dialogue and I needed to score around the dialogue and the director told me the music is fantastic but there's something disturbing me and we, we figured out then it was simply that the violin that I used on top was pretty much in the same frequency range than that boy crying. So we changed this violin to a viola and it changed the world. So, you know, it's something like this. And this one is maybe already too busy, but the other ones, you know, underneath the documentary where you have someone speaking in the pictures, and you can easily do it. Nice one. The gating synthetic clouds. It's it's pretty difficult to pronounce this for me as a Bavarian. Gentle pulses. This one I can pronounce. How much is going on there? I'm pressing the keys now and then I will stop waffling. And that's all the magic that is happening here. 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 And here, not even. 
Compliments. Compliments on this one. Compliments. Gentle pulses. Um, yeah. Load the runner. Mr. Robot. We are the robots. <laughs> Kraftwerk. Running blades, running blades. Holy! Holy! I need this one, I need this one, I need this one, I will save even this one. Because this one was cool. This one was really cool. That's a complete intro. meets sound design and even this one has been copied i don't know if you uh, realize it you know they have since years but since many years where music meets sound design and now we have where sound design meets the music from someone else um yeah pr pretty much copied in my opinion so are running blades yeah the, the blade runner and um shorelines yeah we're nearly through stick with me why is it so often I was presenting shh from pfft instruments last week and even there the I wanted to close the the stream and the last three <laughs> patches the last three they kept me another half an hour going on Even this one is nice. Even this one is nice. I love logic. I love logic for the simple fact you play something and then you realize, hey, that was cool. And then you have this possibility to simply press this button. How is it called officially? Aufnahme behalten. Yeah, to keep the recording that you did. So it records even if you're not recording, but then you can recall the last thing that you did, and that's so useful. Then the next one is. Swelling circuits. Pretty straightforward. Nice. And, and, and Synthborg Chase. I'm expecting some magic here. One preset, one 
preset. There was no external bass. There was no external effect. There was no percussion. This was one preset. But this is, I said it before, and I, I would like to underline it again and again and again. This one preset is done by three presets. That's it, which you control then. You know, the options you see here on the keyboard, they are divided. You have the arpeggiator, you do have the macro sequencer, and the macro sequencer in this case is working on the envelope. It's working on the filter. It's working on the drive. It's working on the gate. And it's working on the space. No, sorry, on the gate, it's not even working. The gate is not even switched on. Let's switch the gate on, just out of curiosity. Sorry, did I save it? I hope I saved what I just did. Yes. It gets even more rhythmical then. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And the last one and the last one and then we all go for our Saturday evening the triple pounder. And let's just as the last thing within this stream, let's deconstruct this. What is happening? You have three channels all over the keyboard. In this case, you have the arpeggiator on the first one, switch it off. And that's it. Just the sound with the reverb. Okay. We switch the arpeggiator on again. And what is the macro sequencer doing? Switch the macro sequencer off. working here on a filter, cutoff frequency, doesn't work on the drive, doesn't work on the gate, doesn't work on the space, as easy as that. And I think that's it for today. I think in those 90 minutes I could show you that even Mosaic Neon is again another masterpiece from the guys at Heaviosity. There went a lot of thought into it, there went a lot of love into it. You can tell from the names, it starts even there. We had the, the chip tunes before, the, the Mario Boy, you know, and the Game Boy's Revenge and this stuff. There went, there went a lot of um, passion into this project. Every single preset is laid out, you know, by three sound sources. Every sound source can be completely manipulated by its own. And that's it from my side for today. Let's take off the headphones. And um, thanks for everyone who was in the chat. I enjoyed it a lot today, but I was sure that I would enjoy it. I can already tell you the next three weeks the Saturdays are already booked means I already know precisely what I will present the next three weeks there will be giveaways so stay tuned there will be giveaways of cool cool libraries um, two of them even during the live stream I will simply yeah have a giveaway in the live stream we will see how we will do this and I can tell you next Saturday even there will be a library completely different from this one. Completely. It's more in the in the heroic Viking world, if you will. But it's cool. It's pretty cool. I'm already playing with it. I'm already learning it. And there are other things coming that are pretty neat. They are pretty cool. So stay tuned. Um, I will talk, of course, a little bit about this film project that I just closed. I will talk about other projects that are going on. That's it. Make good music always. Uh, ja, Fabian, danke, danke dir auch. Ein ganz schönes Wochenende, ehrlich. Lieben Gruß auch an die Kinder. Die, die sind ja das Wichtigste. Es ist einfach so. Und ähm, 
Yeah, exactly. How do you know, Fabian? How do you know? Uh, thanks for showing us the library. It's always a pleasure to watch you. Um, exactly. It's Prometheus. Prometheus. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is is pretty neat is is pretty cool and uh yeah there, there are other surprises coming over the next over the next weeks even cool libraries in the making um, i'm discovering more and more developers more and more developers are reaching out to me even that's so that yeah such a satisfaction that you know the last two years of really hard work um coming you know to to, to result and um I think that's it. Um, I have to care even now for my son a little bit. Unfortunately, he had an accident. He broke his hand, and uh, even the the um, the operation didn't went really the way it should. But yeah, it's, he's good. He's fine. He's up there, and I would go now even you know play a little bit with my kids. The weather is not the best even if we are in Italy. It's not really warm outside, but you can be outside, and that's it. Thank you all really, really for your ongoing support, for supporting me in the chat and, and, and all this. The channel is growing and the more the channel will grow, you know, the more giveaways there will be obviously over time and, and, and that stuff. And that's it. I will close now. See you very, very soon. I will publish even, I think, a video right now after this. It's already online. And uh, yeah, many good things are happening. I hope even in your life, many good things are happening. And that's it. Bye-bye.